So this is research that's joined with academics from Princeton University and researchers from J.P. Morgan Chase in U Chicago. So let me begin by saying that the pandemic has had huge impacts on the economy. We know that there's been unprecedented dislocation in the labor market. There's been dramatic falls in spending mirrored by sharp increases in aggregate savings. That's what you're seeing in this graph here. So a key question for researchers and policymakers is, what are the factors that are driving these aggregate trends? We know that there's been uh, shutdowns, fear of health risks, income loss. At the same time, there's been very large transfers from the government to households and businesses. So we want to understand how important are each of these factors for driving these aggregate trends. So in this paper, what we do is look at the linkages between spending, income and savings at the household level in order to shed light on these different channels. What we do is use bank account data on household spending, income and savings um, to look at these particular trends. And we think our results are useful, not only for understanding the pandemic, but for understanding the causes and dynamics of the recession more broadly. And in particular, we also think there are policy implications for fiscal stimulus. Um, so the data we use comes from JP Morgan Chase Institute. This is household level data, day by day bank account information for over 8 million customers on their detailed credit and debit transactions. We have liquid asset balance information and labor income and employer information from the direct deposit inflows. Some of the key advantages of this data is that we can see for each household their joint spending income and savings patterns. There's a lot of work that's used aggregated data to look at these three things. Here we're actually going to see for the same household their patterns. There's a lot of very rich individual covariates such as the zip code, industry of employment, race and age, which help us to think about the different types of stories and tease apart and control factors. In addition, um, there's also a very large sample size, wide geographic coverage, and it spans the entire income distribution. So a lot of the existing data um, tends to focus on one part of the income distribution. Here, we're really going to be able to say something about the whole income distribution. So using this data, we can ask the question, how has the joint distribution of savings and spending evolved during the pandemic? So let me start first by showing you patterns in the spending. So what you see here is the year-on-year -year growth in spending split by pre-pandemic income quartiles. There's a few things to take away from this graph. First, we see very large and pervasive initial declines of 30 to 40% immediately after the pandemic hits. This is pervasive across the entire income distribution. The second thing to take away from here is that there's been a recovery from about mid-March onwards, and what we see is very different patterns across the income distribution. In particular, we see much faster recovery in spending for low-income households relative to high-income households. Now, this might seem surprising at first because we know that the lower-income households are the ones that have been most exposed to job losses during this pandemic. So I'll come back to what we think about this in a minute. So basically, these patterns mirror what we see if we split things instead by the industry where people work or by zip codes and things like that. So a really natural question I think we can ask is, how much of these spending patterns are actually reflecting income versus where people live? Um, and one reason we might ask that is that we know that high income households tend to live in cities. And cities we know have had greater disease burdens, more restrictive shutdowns. So it might be really natural to ask, could the fact that higher income households spending recovered more slowly reflect the fact that they lived in cities more? Well, the short answer to that is no. Um, and one of the advantages of this data is that we do have such a rich set of covariates at the individual level. So we can do things such as estimating those spending patterns with and without zip code fixed effects. And we find really similar co coefficients which basically tells us that it's not just where people are living, but something about their income levels that are driving those patterns. In the second part of the paper, we then looked at patterns in terms of savings. And what you're seeing here is the average liquid balance um, over the pandemic period. And what we see is a very sharp increase in the amount of savings 
as measured by liquid balances, mirroring what we saw in the first slide on aggregate savings. If we split this again by the pre-pandemic income levels, what we see is uh, quite striking. First of all, the first thing to take away is that across income distribution, people are saving more. And the second thing to note is that this growth in liquid balances is actually strongest for the low income households. This is this light blue line up here. Um, it's almost double what we see in terms of the highest income group. So what is this saying? This is saying that the strong growth in savings for low income households implies that liquid wealth inequality has actually shrunken in a matter of weeks during the pandemic. This is quite striking and actually occurred in an extremely fast period of time. So what are the key results? The so key results is that there's been very large and pervasive initial spending declines. Um, some back of the envelope calculations we've done suggest that it seems too big to be explained by job losses alone. If we take job losses, multiply that by how much people typically cut spending by. The second thing that we've also found is very divergent patterns. Um, if we look at things split by the income quartiles and the seems to emerge around mid-April, First of all, spending recovers much faster for low income households. Savings also grows faster for this group. And this might seem, as I said earlier, somewhat surprising because we know this is the group that suffered the greatest increase in terms of job losses. So a very natural question is, well, what can explain this joint pattern in spending and savings? There's lots of explanations that might be driving this. One potential explanation that we have some suggestive evidence for is potentially government income support. So we're still kind of working on kind of cleaning and updating and processing the chase data for income changes during the pandemic period, but we can do some suggestive um, evidence on this front by combining the chase data with the CPS publicly available data. So what we've done is estimate what are the changes in income with and without government transfers using the CPS data and combine it with the spending data. So what you see here is the decline in income implied by the CPS for the different income quartiles. Indeed, consistent with other sources, the low income group did have the largest declines in terms of their labor income relative to the top income group here. And um, this is what we've also seen with ADP data. It's also consistent with analysis in Chetty et al, which uses zip code level data. And they, in that paper, they provide evidence that low income households have faced increased unemployment, in part because high income households have cut back on spending in sectors where those types of low income households are generally employed. And we think that's a very plausible explanation for explaining this incidence of labor market losses. But it's a little bit harder to explain the joint movement in income and spending, which is what this orange line here. In fact, if you compare the blue and the orange, they go in different, di the different directions. Um, and so what we see is that the low income group actually recovered spending faster despite having larger drops in income, excluding transfers. So what's going on? Well, if we add on transfers, this is what it looks like in this dark blue line here. And what you now see is this positive correlation between income, including transfers, with the level of spending across the distribution. So we think that this is suggestive evidence that the government support and transfers was during the pandemic period, partially supporting the spending, particularly on the low end of the distribution. Now, clearly these are just correlations, um, but in ongoing work, what we're doing is exploiting the microdata to better understand the causal role of government income support for driving spending relative to other spending, uh, other factors in the pandemic. Okay, so to sum up, what are the implications? We've seen aggregate spending rebound, although it still remains below pre-pandemic pre levels. The government income support may be potentially driving spending and recovery um, and savings growth. Because of this, um, one potential implication is that phasing out the stimulus too quickly um, may potentially transform a supply side recession into a broader recession if it's coupled with declines in income and demand. Um, 